Now we're going to show you how to cut a gable roof, a couple of valleys, and then cut a California on top of some existing rafters that make a valley. This roof here on our diagram consists of a ridge running from outside this wall all the way through the outside of this wall. It consists of a ridge coming in and meeting two valleys which will have some rafters stack up to. And we have the same thing on the other side but this one's going to be a California where we stack over common rafters to create a valley. And we'll show you how to do each of these in this gable roof. So why don't we go ahead and get started and we'll show you how to do this roof. Now we're going to show you how to lay out for a gable roof which has a couple valleys in it on one side and just has California on the other. On this first side all you do is you pull a two foot layout straight on through and when you come to where your valleys are marked at you just don't lay out anything in between one valley and the other valley because we're going to have a couple of common rafters coming up at the opposite gable with gable studs in it. So we just pull our layout and we just pull it on a two foot center and we just pull it straight on through. Clear the end. But on the opposite side, we're going to show you how to cut a California. And this means you have to stack your rafters at two foot centers all the way through all the way through because we're going to stack a roof on top of the common rafters on the main span. So we just pull that two foot layout all the way through. Well, we just finished laying out for our, our gable roof, for our rafters, but there's one more thing we need to do. We need to take our span so we can figure out the length of what our common rafters will be. Our span will be 10 foot 1. So why don't we go find out the lengths of our rafters and cut them. Now we've racked our pile of rafters for our gable roof, for our common rafters. And when we're gang cutting, I think one of the simplest roofs you can gang cut on without using a swing table or a saw with a dado blade in it is a 12 and 12 pitch. And what we're going to do is we're going to square across one end for our plumb mark. And since it's going to be a two inches to the, where my level cut is going to come out of my cut, I'll go ahead and mark the other side of my square on the two inch blade side. The reason I say this, it's on a 12 and 12 pitch, if my plumb cut is an inch and a half deep, which we're going on this house, and we come out on our level cut, the distance from the level cut and this plumb cut is two inches. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and tape out for our rafters. And after I establish these two marks, even before I start cutting, I'm going to go ahead and tape out for the rafter. And this span is seven foot, five eighths of an inch. Turn it up on There you go, Dan. Thanks. Once I have this established, if I'm dealing with a long rack of rafters, usually I use a chalk line and I'll snap it, but since I'm dealing with such a short run of rafters here, I usually just use my framing square. Draw a line from mark to mark. And before I, the next step, before I actually break my bundle and start marking my rafters, we need to cut 
this in first before we get any movement in our rafters so our lines don't change. And we just make one pass with our saw this way. And this, and this roof is on a 12 and 12, as I explained earlier. So we just turn our saw on a 45 degree angle. And we come back the other way. This makes for a nice, fast cut. Again, if you're dealing with different pitches, you can use the saw to make a pass and then use your swing table, which is a saw that turns on a 90 degree, or it might only turn up to about a 65 or 70 degree, depending on what table you have on it, and make this other pass. Now we'll go ahead and go down to the end and Mark our plumb cuts that meet our ridge. If you simply follow those simple principles on cutting your common rafters for hip roofs, common roofs, gambrel roofs, shed roofs, all your common rafters you can cut. This is one way you can cut it with a little extra speed and save a little time on cutting your rafters. two valleys that are in this gable roof and we're going to show you the most efficient way to cut these. The best way is using your framing square since we're dealing with valleys. Valleys run on a 17 inch run to a 12 inch rise so we set our square at 12 and 17 on the body part and on the inch and a half part here I mark both sides of my square. Let me go ahead and do it to the other one. The reason for this saves you time from flipping your board over from one one side to the other. And we just take our saw, turn it on a 45 degree angle. And we always cut our outside line first. Coming back the opposite way, we cut our other line. Now, once I've done this on my points, the reason I always get my points is because I like to hook my tape on the point, and I just go ahead and mark my measurement.
once I mark my measurement, I go ahead and get my, my pattern. And I make two marks. Since I'm going to bobtail these tails. The reason for this, I'm dealing with an inch and a half piece of wood. And I'm going to 45 this back at an angle and come back out. But to establish coming down on my level cut, which is 3 and 5 eighths, I need to mark this outside one because that's where the point of my valley will be at the end. After I mark my three and five eighths, I just put my square in and do my level cut. When cutting these, I like to make my level cut first. Come back, turn my saw on a 45 degree angle, and I cut my second line back. Once I do that, I go ahead and flip my board over and grab my framing square and just go ahead and mark. an inch and a half back. And come back and for the 45 degree angle, cut the opposite way. This way becomes to the true point of my true measurement where I made my mark earlier for my inside line but my true length mark is on this point where I measured over three quarters of an inch later so I can establish this 45 degree point. This is how you do a bobtailed valley or a bobtailed hip. Okay, now we got the rafters laid out for our skeleton we're going to go ahead and start stacking. First of all, before we start stacking, what I like to do on a gable is, is give me a give me a pole on the end that'll keep my ridge from swaying back and forth and this will tie me in. What I do, I just nail it in the wall and let my rafter come right against it and this will keep, keep it from moving back and forth when I start stacking a gable. Start stacking this gable. I want to start stacking my common rafters on the end. And these cuts here on this common rafter here is for what we call outriggers to go out to hold our sub barge later, which we'll show you about later on. Next step, once I get that end up, what I want to do next is stack a rafter since my ridge has a splice in it, back here to this one so it'll hold my ridge in place before I attach my the extension on my ridge. But if you but if you had a ridge that could run from one end to the next, 
Then you just go ahead and pull up your two common rafters on one end of the house and the other end and just slip it up in between there. But this is the reason I'm stacking a rafter towards the center. Next, next we'll go ahead and slide our ridge in. And what I want to do is nail this one rafter into this 2x4 so it'll hold it in place. I'll go down to the other end and finish extending out my ridge. Now once I have my skeleton put up for my gable, we want to go ahead and fill it in. The gable is probably the most, next to the most simplest roof you can put up. All it consists of is your common rafters. So in this particular gable, we're going to have a couple of valleys coming in, but first we're going to go ahead and and fill the skeleton in and then we'll go ahead and show you how these valleys fit in. Now that we got our rafters laying out, let's go ahead and put them in place. Fastest way is when I'm filling in my common rafters once I get my skeleton up is just go ahead and pull up all my rafters on one side before I even nail them into my ridge and then before I start pulling them up on the opposite side I'll get all these nails nailed at the ridge. Now that we've did our fill and our gable roof, we have this big opening here. And the reason we left this opening is we have a couple of valleys coming up and we're going to have another gable coming up this side. And we're going to go ahead and show you how that's done. In this case, usually we put our common rafters in first and then have our valleys butt into it. But in this case, we're going to go ahead and put our valleys in first and our gable will butt into our valleys. So first we nail 
to one side. And we just use a temporary kicker here, just to hold our valley temporary until we get it established at the correct height. And we do the same thing on the other side. Next, once we've got our valleys just temporary there, we take our common rafters. And we just hold that flush to the outside. Go to the other side, do the same thing. Then once we do this, we take our ridge. There you go, Dan. Just nail that in there. And we slide this up in between our two common rafters. What I like to do is when I'm nailing these ridges, is I like to set one common rafter to the side and bring this one down flush. Go ahead, Dan. You can nail that. This way I can nail my first common rafter straight through my ridge. Then I just toe nail my other one in place. We first nail our ridge in to our common rafter because this establishes our height of our span. And then before we nail our valleys, we always place a level on our ridge. Get it level and get ready to put a temporary kicker on it. Right there, Dan, looks good. Gotta put a couple in there. And once we get a level, we want to bring our valleys in. Do this, we'll take off our temporary kickers. And when we nail these valleys, we want to make sure that they're these points are evenly across, so that way this squares up our ridge because if we have it running off and these two points don't match up, what it does is it shifts your ridge to one side or the other. So these two points, point of this valley and the point of this valley have to meet straight across from each other. And once we do that, we just go ahead and nail it. Right there again. So this, this is what consists of a, of a skeleton of what we're doing here when you're dealing with a gable front like this. All it has is that we have our two common rafters coming up to establish our height and we have our two valleys coming down meeting our commons and nailed in the back of our ridge. And this, and this this is what it takes to establish the skeleton for this one part. And now we're, we'll get ready to show you how we stack the fill in. Our valley jacks coming from the short span, and our valley jacks coming from our main span into this valley. So why don't we go ahead and show you how to cut and, and put those in. Now I'm going to show you the principle of gain cutting your valley jacks. First of all, I, I calculate how many valley, valley jacks I'm going to need from my longest length to my shortest length. I might need five or ten. In this case, we're just going to demonstrate we need five valley jacks. Once I have those stacked up, 
come down the end, just get my framing square and make sure it's tight against the side and put a mark for my plumb cut at my ridge and it'll run down at this angle. Once I have that established, I put my tape on my mark and I come down to nine foot which will be the length of my first valley jack. And then I just do a two foot step down. From this mark, I just put my tape on two foot, mark it on the next raft over. Line up on two foot again on this previous mark and keep on moving one raft over every time. Until I come to my last short rafter. And before I break my bundle apart, what I like to do is, is my longest jack is going to be nine foot. So what I like to do is put my tape back on the end and come down and mark anything past nine foot on my length. I can go nine foot two, nine foot four, but in this case I'm going to make it nine foot four. And I'm gonna make nine foot four. On this other side. And then I'm gonna draw a line across those two marks. What this does is after I make all these cuts, the other side, I'll be able to line up these lines and the leftover piece that's left over on each one of these valley jacks, when I line these lines up, will be two foot distance apart. And let me show you how that's done. Let's go ahead and cut this. What I want to do is get my pattern. Mark my plumb cuts. And I come down and mark my other marks. That'll be on a 45 degree angle. Other plumb marks. Go ahead and cut these. I go ahead and swing my saw on a 45 to cut my plum cuts that die into my valley.
as you can see, if we line up these plumb cuts, you can actually see the progression of them getting longer coming down using the step down method. And then when we come over this leftover lumber that was left over on these cuts, all we have to do is come on over and start stacking them up. And we don't have to pull our tape out and if our step down is two foot in this case, we don't have to slide our board and line up the two foot and get the next one and hook it on and line up the two foot. This is where that nine foot four mark comes into play and I'll show you how it'll save you time and make you money. Is this mark we have, all we have to do is line up that pencil mark on each one of these and when all four of these stack our pencil mark lines up the one I made at nine foot four and you can see the progression coming down to the longest one and all we have to do is we don't have to pull out our tape all we have to do is tape our longest one to the same length as we made over here and cut our plum cuts and this set's all ready to go. Now we've cut all of our fill for our ridge to valley jacks on both the large span and the small span. We'll go ahead and show you how this is assembled. What I like, what I like to do is first start, I like to nail my, my top first and this, and this will come in. Once I nail my top in the right position, you can float this in and this should land right on your layout, right where it goes so you don't really need to pull a layout from your common raft over to your first jack with just at your ridge. Does that look good there, Dan? It's pretty good. And what this simply is, it's simply a our first valley jack is simply a step down method you use on the deduction what well, we use the rafter book it's simply a step down method and if this was a valley that was like 30 feet long and we had 10 of these jacks going all the way up this valley you simply do the same deduction which it might be a two foot deduction but then you just, your next jack would be a two foot deduction off the length of this jack, and it'd just be so on. And this is the progression that it takes on a step down method, method on your valley jacks. And this is, works the same way on your large spans also. Looks good there. This is the uh, finished product. After we have our jack rafters filled in on our main span and our shorter gable that comes into our main span. And while we go and we'll show you how you can do the same roof design, but instead of putting valleys in, it's what we call a California where all of our common rafters go all the way through and we make this valley 
on top of our common rafters. And let's let's go and we'll show you how that's done also. First thing to build in a California on top of these rafters is we have to sheet it. So we'll go ahead and just sheet this roof. Now that we sheet our roof, we're going to go ahead and show you how to stack our rafters, establish our ridge, and fill our jacks in. Notice I, I held my sheeting back an inch and a half back from my outside walls so I could still slip my common rafters coming down to my wall to establish my ridge height. Once I have my common rafters, and what I want to do is I want to, before I even nail my common rafters, I want to have my two rafters held in place to establish my height of my ridge. And then I need to level it so I can either pull this ridge in or out. Get right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead and nail it right there, Dan. No, no, no. Yeah, let's start. There's two methods of when we're dealing with just two gable rafters and you have a ridge that's just flopping out here we need to square this ridge up with our common rafters and one way you can do it on a short ridge is just as long as your rafters are plumb with your outside wall you can just put your speed square in here and just make sure that it's tight against your rafter and it's coming against your ridge and you can just move that ridge where it's perfectly square but if you're dealing with a a situation like this where you've got a ridge that's maybe 30 feet long or 20 foot long, there's another method you can use. You can just get two tapes, cross your tapes, and make a meet at the same point. In this case we have 82 inches, but this will establish and set your ridge square. Now that we got our two common rafters and our ridge established for level and square, we're going to go ahead and run some 2 bytes down for our jack rafters to sit on. When nailing in your your jacks, it's always good on these is to go ahead and nail your tops in first. And then just swing your bottom to where it meets the edge of your two by four. And 
we'll go ahead and do the same thing to the other side. And this is this is how we build California, what we call California, without having the valleys, but simply using this method to create the same look without having true valleys in your roof. Now let's review and see how we arrived at getting this cut for our jack rafter that sits on top of our California. Jack rafters sit in California, sit on top of a board. And so what we need to do is we need to put a level cut according to the pitch we have. And we have a pitch of 12 and 12. So what I do is I get a board that's at least twice the length of one rafter on one side. And let me show you why. First of all, I want to mark, put my square on a 12 and 12. Mark my body part, the body edge of my square. That'll be my level cut. And in this case, our bevel cut that my jack rafters cut on, on this rough angle, is a 45 degree angle. So I have my saw on a 45 degree angle. The reason I cut this in half is I make, I save time, I actually make two cuts with one saw pass. So I have this rafter that goes on one side and the other rafter that goes on the other side. So now all I have to do is just tape it and these are two foot six, so I just hook on my point, I mark two foot six, Got my ridge side. This way, they're ready to go. And these sit, just sit right on top of the two by four, which we're gonna stack later on. But you notice with that one cut, I cut both sides. Now we have this California belt in place. You can see where the ridge is sitting. I want to review how we received this cut on the back of our ridge to fit against our roof nice and neatly. Why don't we go in and just look back and see how we established that cut. Let's go ahead and cut our ridge to length. I already have it marked to length where I want it cut. And this is going to die on top of my other roof. And remember we're dealing with a 12 and 12 pitch. So what I want to do is put my framing square on the outside in the outside corner coming up on a 12 and my other come down the other side on a 12 so it'd be a 12 and 12 pitch and I go ahead and mark the long side of my square but if you're dealing with a let's say a 6 and 12 pitch, 
you'd simply move this outside edge on number six. Slide the body of your square coming the opposite way on 12 and you mark the body side of your square and this would sit on your roof. So it doesn't matter what pitch you're dealing with, whether you're dealing with anything from a 2 and 12 to a 24 and 12, this is how we establish this mark for your ridge to sit on top of of another roof if you're doing a California. Let's do a quick uh, review of how we arrive at these notches in our gable end rafters, which our 2x4 outriggers will fit in to hold our sub barges. Let's review back and show you the best method on cutting these the fastest and the simplest way. What I want to show you is how to gain cut for our notches for our outriggers. If we have our rafters upside down we need to put our notches on the other side so what I just simply do is grab them tightly, flip them over, just double check make sure my points line up. And in this particular case we're going to run our outriggers two foot on center. Just hook on the point of my gable and I mark two foot and then I go three and a half inches since we're going to use two by fours. I come down four foot and six foot. And I get my uh, speed square out and just mark across all of them. Next I want to go ahead and set, since we're dealing with inch and a half thickness for our outriggers, I want to set my saw for an inch and a half thickness. So I usually just put my saw against my rafter and set it to where it comes a thickness of a 2 by 4 there. Let me just go ahead and run it on through. Next, what I do is I just go ahead and lay them flat. And some people like taking a board and lining it up and marking the back like this. But on most skill saws, from the edge of your table to your blade is an inch and a half. So what I like to do to save time is set my nose my blade flush with the side of my rafter and just do a plunge cut. The reason we cut all these in a roof is the simple principle behind whatever you can cut on the ground it will save you time and if you're in business it will save you money on labor costs because if you have to have a guy crawl up on a roof that's on a 12 and 12 pitch and you have 20 foot rafters and he's trying to drag a saw up there to notch these in and a cord there's a there's a lot of wasted time there so this will save you time and money with simple tricks like this well, we finished stacking our gable roof with the with a gable with a couple valleys in it on the short span, and we covered on how to cut in California. And if you just take these simple principles and that we showed you on how to 
on these certain cuts, you can master any gable roof no matter how big or small it is. The main thing is that you follow the, the principles of it and not the design, but go for the certain points that we're trying to show you that once you master these, there'll be no uh, gable roof that you cannot cut.